1. So the backstory. After living in Vancouver, BC from 1984 to 2001, I decided to move home. Mom was getting up in years and the dumb reasons for leaving the province didn't exist anymore. I was a single mom of a pre-teen at the time. So I settled into a small town outside the capital region and worked in daycare. I loved my job, but ended up getting double pneumonia so had to find different work. So I went back to school but ended up working as a nanny for a year. So as I wasn't able to find work, I went back to school and did a course in customer service and call center work. I had a call center job selling a The History of Christianity. When I left, they had just published book 6 of a 12-book series. So finally I was thrilled I got my dream job. I started part-time. But soon I was being called in for other shifts as employees had their choices of jobs. Also, Lewis Craft had a recruitment of being able to knit or crochet as well as know most of the product they sold. Because I was moving around from store to store, I often wore my apron at home, forgetting that I had my name tag on. This is important for what happened later. My name tag was a cross-stitched tag using a rather large alphabet, so my name was easy to see from far away. It was stitched in turquoise on a white background, so it was easy to see. I got pretty settled to my job, and I supplement with another part-time job that paid more and I got SSI off my back. It was also around this time that I met my future husband. During this time I realized I had to deal with my alcohol consumption. So I was attending meetings after work. Unless I worked at WEM, west end of the city. So one cool late summer evening, I'm waiting for the bus to head home after a meeting. I could have walked, but I was tired. My boyfriend, now husband, said he could come pick me up, but I said no, that's okay. I don't mind taking the bus. Little did I know, I wished I had taken him up on his offer. So I'm sitting at the bus stop, relaxing and listening to music on my Discman. It was either Billy Gilmore's Everything and More or Barry Manilow's Greatest Hits Volume 3. So the area I live in has some big issues. Prostitution, drug deals and crime. It was also where I could find the cheapest rent. Anyway, I'm minding my business, listening to tunes and waiting for the bus. When this old truck pulls up in front of me, the passenger window is rolled down. Good and truck. Hey, crafty girl, want a party? I can hook you up with some good shit. Actually didn't realize he used my name at that point. My name is a unique name, and one you don't hear often anymore. Me, no... Thanks, but not interested. Good and truck. Come on, it'll be fun. Me, what part of no don't you understand? Sees bus. Ah. <sighs> he sees the bus and pulls away. But he then does this strangest thing. Where I'm waiting, there is a Catholic church, a dead end lane next to it, and then a community league with a playground and park. He parks his truck into the dead-end lane and watches as I get on the bus. By this time, I've pulled out my cell and called the boyfriend asking him to meet me at the 7-Eleven. Don't bring the truck, just walk there as it would be faster. My creep radar was going off, and I was in fight-or-flight mode. Not that you could see, though. Driver asked me if everything was okay. I said I was being followed, and I stayed next to the driver. The driver saw I was being followed and let me off at the light as it had just turned red, so I could cross the road to the 7-Eleven. Now, my boyfriend doesn't do PDA, he has Asperger's, so is on the autistic spectrum, but he realized what I was doing when I was exaggerating the hug, kisses, etc. He saw the car drive off quite fast. After that, he pretty much picked me up, and after a while I didn't see the vehicle that winter had set in so no more evening walks or waiting for buses. So I put it out of my mind until one spring day I saw this picture, Thomas Zvekla, on the front page of both major newspapers. I actually got physically ill. This was the dude in the truck. He was found guilty on one death, and acquitted on another. He was questioned in several murders and disappearances, 
He's currently sentenced as a dangerous offender, which means he will never get out of prison. I'm thankful that I survived this, but do it in truck. Let's not meet ever again. Two. It was June of 2015 when I met Tyler. I had just turned 20 and my parents were going through a nasty divorce. So, to be sad, I was having some issues. It wasn't long before Tyler had me wrapped around his finger. Within the first couple of months of knowing and dating him, I started to see red flags. My mom and sister didn't like him at all, and neither did any of my friends. He was very jealous and insecure. It started off with him telling me what I should and shouldn't be wearing, to bringing up my issues and using them against me. I'm not going to go all into detail because that would take about five pages front and back of how crazy he was. Anyways, around December of 2015, Tyler started to log into my social media accounts and was pretending to be me. He would message guys I knew and flirt with them, WTF, and message my best friend trying to start unnecessary drama. Obviously, I found out about it and confronted him. His excuse was that he was bored and wanted to see what they would say and thought it was funny. Who does that? Well, I told Tyler to stop, and if he didn't, I wasn't going to keep being in a relationship with him. Shocker, he didn't stop. Anyways, it only took me a couple of months later, February 2016, to finally break up with this nut job. Because of the person I am, I was still trying to be nice to him. Bad. Bad idea. Unfortunately, I let him on to thinking he had a chance to get back with me. He didn't. I told him over the phone that we would never get back together, which made him freak out. He started threatening me, saying things like, you'll regret this, or watch your back, bitch. I cut all contact with him after that. Well, at least until March 28th, 2016. The day I'll never forget. It was 6.45 in the morning, and I was walking out the door of my house to leave for work. My driveway is about one-tenth of a mile long, and on each side of the driveway are trees lining it. So one way in and one way out. It's dark outside, and I'm driving down the driveway. And guess who's blocking me in? Tyler. I'm getting agitated now. He gets out of his car and walks to mine. I roll my window down enough to where he can hear me, and I tell him to beat it. I have to get to work. For about five minutes of bickering back and forth, he finally says, Okay, just give me one last kiss and I'll go. Feeling like I'm all out of options, I cave in and say fine. Well, as I kiss him goodbye, he unlocks my door, since my window was now down, and opens my car door. He is standing in between the door and me. Now it's obvious he isn't leaving. He proceeded to tell me that I was going to text my boss to tell him I'm not coming in to work. Then after I was to text my boss that, we were going in his car and leaving this place for good. Yeah, not happening. Since I wasn't going to do any of that, Tyler reaches over and tries to grab my phone from me. Now we're out of the car, wrestling for my phone. I punched him in the face. I don't promote violence, but he deserved it. And he lets go of my phone. I'm crying, begging him to just go and leave me alone. This is the part where he goes and says, I really hate to do this. And pulls out a gun that was tucked in the back of his pants. Shit, shit, shit. My adrenaline is pumping and my brain is going about a thousand miles per second. I'm trying to stay cool and walk back to my car. I'm now sitting in the driver's seat with Tyler standing in between the door and I again. I asked him what the hell are you doing as he is waving the pistol all around. He tells me he doesn't know and that he is sorry. He slipped up and told me the gun wasn't loaded. So I took this as an opportunity to get the hell out. While he's standing there, I put my car in reverse and gunned it. He stumbled back enough for me to be able to shut and lock my door. Since it's light outside now, I can see that there's just enough room for me to drive my car into a ditch and hope to make it out. I never prayed so hard in my life. I put my car back in drive and floored it. I made it onto the road and see Tyler running to his car. He is now gaining speed behind me. 
goes around and speeds off. Now would be the time to call 911, right? Well, I was too out of it to think about that. I get to work and immediately go to my boss and tell him what happened. I end up calling my mom and she called 911. I leave work and go home and talk to the officers. I ended up taking out warrants for his arrest. He was charged and arrested with trespassing, assault on a female, and assault with pointing a gun. I also got a restraining order. Unfortunately, it doesn't end here. Now it's around May of 2016. I started to see him following me while I'm driving to and from work. There was nothing I could do since it was a public road. This was going on for about three weeks. I had enough of it. One afternoon, my sister was in the car with me as I was going to take her to her appointment. Well, here comes Tyler in his stupid white car behind me. So I had my sister videotape him and I called 911. I ended up in a Walmart parking lot and got him arrested. He spent the night in jail for breaking the restraining order. I had to go to court against him and ended up just settling for him to do community service and take anger management classes. Thankfully, after the night he spent in jail, he has left me alone since. Tyler has a new girlfriend now, so thankfully I am old news. What scares me the most is that I didn't even know him for a whole year, and all this happened. So crazy stalker ex-boyfriend. Let's not meet again. Ever. 3. This Looney Tune, here on out referred to as LT, found me on Deviant Art a year or so ago, and requested some commissions of his original characters. It's money, I take it. He likes it. He now thinks we're friends. Of course, I won't shoo him away, that's a mean thing to do. When he says hi in my front page, I say hi back. He'll then either ask for my Skype or Discord name. I do not reply, because I don't give out that information to just anybody. I've had instances where people whom I've considered mere acquaintances buzz me nearly every hour with stuff about themselves and their ideas and their characters, without even asking me beforehand if I was even interested in hearing about it. I had a funny feeling LT would be the same way, and since we barely talk on DeviantArt as it was, I would simply not reply to his request for Skype or Discord info. Come May of this year, he commissions me to draw his latest character. Again, money, so I accept. He commissions me twice, the second time requesting slight redesigns. In between his commissions, he sends out a PM out of nowhere, describing in great detail what changes he wants to make and why. Stuff I didn't ask beforehand, nor did I even care to know about. Afterwards, he sends me his character profile and asks what I think about him. Yeah, the character is a total Gary Stu. Overpowered, no discernible flaws, and also a complete ripoff of an already existing protagonist of a popular anime series. Since LT has a habit of messaging me random details about his characters, and he ever so politely asked for my opinion, I decide to be honest with him and say all what I just wrote. Gary Stu doesn't fit the universe he's based off, 100% ripoff of another existing character. He deletes the profile, then PMs me again apologizing for making Gary Stu. Like, dude, you don't need to apologize. Just work on improving yourself, that's all. He then proceeds to message me with nonsense about what he plans to change, what directions he wants to go with, who his Japanese seiyuu should be, and the amount of time he'll need to work on him before he'll submit his profile again. I finally ask, why are you telling me this? I never asked you about this character of yours. I'm sorry, but I'm not interested. And told him spamming someone with their ideas and characters was not going to interest them is going to annoy them, and let's face it, I was getting annoyed. When a friend of mine noticed the nonsense going on in my page, I'm going to randomly call her Bright Eyes. She decided to step in and explain to LT that he needs to tone down his behavior and just focus on his work and gather a crowd rather than force his stuff on people. He responded by deactivating his DeviantArt username. He promptly made a new DeviantArt account and wrote on his journal, going to work on this account until the real mink girl calms down. I found out about this because he tagged my username, which lets me see his journal. 
I don't know what he meant by that. Why am I in the wrong here? Whatever. I just block him because I don't want to deal with him anymore. He then deletes his new DeviantArt account and makes a third one. This time he goes to my friend Bright Eyes and PMs her, apologizing for his crazy behavior. It's just he has a mood disorder. He went on explaining how in the past he doxed a YouTube user and threatened to kill someone else because he was in a bad mood. He also goes on to say, I have blocked a real mink girl to ensure her safety. Needless to say, I block his third account too, and shortly after, he deletes that one too. A week later, I don't hear a word from him. I'm thinking he finally got a clue and moved on in his life. Nope. It's not long when I receive an email from him, saying, I think it would be best if I distance myself from you. I don't want to put you through all of that again. So please don't contact me after this. Okay. I don't know what's worse, the fact that he randomly emailed me after I stopped all contact with him initially, so he could ask me not to contact him, or the fact that he emailed me and I've never given him my email address. So yeah, I don't reply, obviously, but the guy then manages to reactivate his original DeviantArt account, and messages Bright Eyes on DeviantArt apologizing once more about how he needs to be reformed. Bright Eyes flat out tells him he's a stalker psycho and he needs to just stop. He threatens to report her. She tells him he needs to drop all this and even stop emailing me. And that's stalking behavior now. I did tell her about the email he sent. His response... Looks like I'm going to have to kill her. Bright Eyes then chews him out for the apparent death threat against me. LT then sends me a second email saying, I dare you, I double dare you, bitch. Just try to fucking kill me. Okay, LT is officially mental. And if that wasn't bad, my mother called me. I moved away from home two years ago, saying this strange sounding guy called her house and left a voicemail saying, if this is a real monk girl's real name, don't fuck with me. No, no, no. Okay, not only do I no longer live at that home, but I never, never, ever give out any of my phone numbers to anyone on the web. Unless I know that person for years and trust them. LT was certainly not one of those people. But yeah, after that, I definitely called the police because that is legit stalking, right? Anywho, that's my unfortunate run-in with a Looney Tune. And I'm glad I never met this ass in person. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here. And thank you very much for listening to Three True Scary Stories, episode 324. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Right, well, I have a very busy week ahead of me. So you guys will get this on Monday. That'll be the 10th. Uh, and I want to take the 17th through to like the 23rd off. Uh, but I also don't want to leave you guys without uploads. I'm sure you wouldn't mind if I took a rest, uh, but I like to keep the channel going to keep things ticking along. It's very important for me that I do that when I, I'm taking time off just, just for the sake of having a rest. Uh, that's the week of my birthday, and I always like to take that off whenever possible. So I'm going to be spending this week essentially trying to get double the work done. Uh, I've done it before, and it's quite doable. It just means uh, a lot of late nights and uh, a lot of grumpiness in my part, but we get through it and uh, we get the get the content done. I think the thing that got me through it last year were a lot of energy drinks, caramel shortcake, and uh, clips from Craig Ferguson interviewing people. I expect a similar creative process this year. Now, what that might mean is, because I'm making videos in advance, I should be able to get most of the usual types done ahead of time, but there's certain ones, like, for example, the glitch videos, that I can only usually gather them once a week. Now, I don't know for sure, so don't quote me, but I, it might mean that we'll have a glitch video this week. But next Thursday, when I'm off, uh, we will have something else up, because I may not be able to get the stories. Might be another paranormal video, uh, it might be scary stories, or it might be retail or revenge or something like that. I'm not sure what it'll be, but if I can't get the stories to do the glitch video, uh, I will then do something like that. 
but just for that one week. Okay, and I think I've yammered on enough. I just wanted to let you guys know that if you do see a little bit of a change in next week's uploads, that's that's the reason for it. That's uh, uh, the the idea behind it. And with that, I think I'm going to head off for now. So, until next time, thank you very much for listening. And take very good care of yourselves.